וגם קראו תיבת שלום ונגום להנחייתי יקרים יות כיפת אדם ונדי שיגרון דינת ההגנה. המחיינה תימן לשנת שנן שנה שנקר שקשרן מליטם יינה תשמעי שיקרא בין אמר. Good morning. Yesterday we discussed how much Parikshit received the age of Kali that uh, today we will hear about Maharaj Parikshit. We go back to Maharaj Parikshit. We, we heard about his birth and his wonderful qualities. his good qualities, his forbearance, his charitable disposition. And we will hear now how we will support Brahminical culture by giving in charity. We heard also before our marriage, Parishit was given in charity. gold, villages, lands, cows. That is the main duty of the Chatriyas, is to maintain citizens and Brahminical culture. That in this chapter 16 and 17, we will learn how the Chatriyas upheld Brahminical culture. That, uh, of course, we also heard in the 11th chapter, when Krishna was entering Dvarka, the Brahmins would come and glorify Krishna, and they would glorify him to receive him when he came into the city of Dvarka. And the Chatriyas, they are very eager to support the Brahmins. This includes not only the Brahmins, but also the cows. Sutta Goswami will now describe how Maharaj Pariksit rules the kingdom. Chapter 16 and 17, we will learn our very practical chapters. It's about the Krishna conscious administration of the Chatriyas. We'll also see how devotees will rule the world and advise the Chatriyas. And this is, this is very important for us, especially in chapter 17, you get a lot of information and suggestions by Srila Prabhupada about points of how the, how the Chatriya should be, should, how they should implement their program of Krishna consciousness. The, there is a necessity, necessity for proper management, otherwise, Society cannot be peaceful. That, uh, that, yes, it should be peaceful so that everyone can pursue his occupation. So in the chapters 18, 19, it's described that the Brahm, the, the, the Brahmins are able, are able to perform this thousand year sacrifice because Pariksit was there. They were able to be peacefully performed sacrifice. If everyone knows who they are in the Varnashram system, they are happy because everyone knows what to do and they know how to do it. That, uh, so these chapters will explain, they will explain a lot about the Chatriyas and the Brahmins 
and about various aspects of the Varnashram system that uh, is, uh, we uh, will uh, first read the first text. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sutta Uvacha <clears throat> Tata, sorry, Tata Parikshit, Vichavarya Siksaya, Mahim Mahabhagavata Sasa Saha, Yatai Sutyam Avijata Kovida, Samadhi Samfitra Mahat Gunas Tata, Sutakoswami said, Olon Brahmans. Maharaj Pariksit then began to rule over the world as a great devotee of the Lord, under the instructions of the best born Brahmins. He ruled by those qualities which were foretold by expert astrologers at the time of his birth. But, uh, so, said, Mahat Guna, these great qualities that uh, Maharaj Pariksit was a Mahabhagavat, a great devotee. It said here, Tvichavarya Siksaya, under the instruction of the, of the twice born Brahmins. The emperor has his own qualifications, but he listens to the Brahmins. That uh, the, the Brahmins instruct the Chatriyas how to rule, and the Chatriyas follow the instructions of the Brahmins. So the Brahmins are detached, and therefore they can give the best advice. If you would want some, if they would, if these Brahmins would want something from you, then their advice may be tinted. They, they don't want the money of the Chatriyas. They are satisfied in their study, in their puja. They don't want anything that the Chatriyas can give them. The Brahmins and the Sannyasis, they are detached. When one functions in the Varnashram system, one must be detached if you want to be, uh, yeah, if you want to be in the number one, that, uh, yes, then you must control. And the Chatriyas, they control the whole world. Therefore, the, the Brahmins have who are, who are supporting these Brahmanas, they have to be the wisest of the wise as they, as they advise the Chatriyas. Srila Prabhupada wanted to create Brahmans to lead the society. So Brahmans must be free to study the Shastras so that they can have a vision that uh, if we have men at the top who are overburdened, how can they get the time to study? They have the vision based on the scriptures and therefore we need the Brahmins. This is one of the qualities of a Chatriya, that they take advice of the Brahmins. Maharaj Pariksit, at the end of, of his life, when he renounces his kingdom, he will take advice of the Brahmins and the sages also at that moment when he decided to prepare for death. So there must be a class of men and their only business is to see the truth. They are the Brahmins. Srila Prabhupada is lecturing on this first. But we need also Chatriyas, Srila Prabhupada said, we need also Chatriyas. 
that in our society, everyone thinks himself intelligence. I'm a Brahman. You do what, and you do what I say. <laughs> but actually, Kala Sutra Sambhava, Srila Prabhupada said. In Kali Yuga, everyone is born Sutra. So therefore, there is chaos. Srila Prabhupada wanted that, that there was an that there, that there be order in society and the Varnashram system is giving that order. It is organized according to quality and work, Krishna says. Bhagavad Gita 4.13, of course, Satur Vayam Maya Shistam Guna Karma Vibhagasa Tasya Kartaram Apimam Vitya Kartam Afyam what Krishna says according to the three modes of material nature and the work associated with them, the four divisions of human society are created by me. And although I'm the creator of this system, you should know that I'm yet a non-doer, being unchangeable. So we will read it. A short part of the purport of the first verse, about 10 lines down, that uh, so. Maharaj Pariksit was therefore a devotee of the first order. And thus he used to consult great sages and learned Brahmins who could advise him by Shastra how to execute the state administration. Such great kings were, were more responsible than, more, than modern elected executive heads because they obliged to create authorities by following their instructions left in the Vedic literature. So Srila Prabhupada in the purport here is going to compare the Vedic kings with the present state of head. And there is quite a difference. There is quite a difference. That, uh, so we continue reading the, pur the pur purple. There was no need for in, for impractical fools to enact daily a new legislative bill and to conveniently alter it again and again for some purpose. So the laws, we see they are always changing that uh, because there are different pressure groups, there are new presidents, new rules every time. So one group says we want it we want it like this. And the other group said, no, no, we want it like that. So, but that is not how a government should be, Srila Prabhupada says. The laws are already given and it is the duty of the king to enforce the laws. That uh, Srila Prabhupada says, we continue reading the purport, that um, the rules and regulations were already set forth by great sages like Manu, Chakya Valka, Parasar, and other uh, liberated sages, and enactments were all suitable for all ages in all places. Therefore, the rules and regulations were standard and without flaw and defect. So they didn't have to think about this. They are already there, these rules. Their duty was about how to enforce the law. But, uh, so kings like Maharaj Pariksit had their council of advisors and all members of that council were either great sages and Brahmins of the first uh, order. They did not accept any salary, nor had they any necessity for such salaries. The state would get the best advice without expense, expenditure, Srila Prabhupada. 
writes the, that. Um, so we have already read the list of the names of great sages who came to visit Bhishma Dev at the time of his death and who came to visit Ma Maharaj Parikshit at the time of, of death, we will see. So Srila Prabhupada would write, this sage is a member of Yudhisthira's council of advisors. They were part of councils of advisors of Kshatriya kings. Therefore, they got the best advice without the expenditure. An example in not so modern times, Srila Prabhupada said, is Sanakya Pandit. He did not take any salary from the king. He was a prime minister of India. As soon as, as the king questioned his advice, he said, I quit. So the Brahmins, they did not care for the opulence of the king. Out of their own mercy, they were giving advice and service to society because the king supported the Brahmins that, uh, and everyone in society could take advantage of the knowledge of the Brahmins. This includes astrologers, physicians, and they would be supported by the state. Srila Prabhupada said, the, he said to the government leaders in America that if you support our movements of Brahmins, then we could get rid of America from drug addiction. That, uh, so this was what happened in the days of Maharaj Brexit 5,000 years ago. Mar uh, he was a Mahabharabad. And Srila Prabhupada stresses again and again the quality of being a Mahabharabad is the most important quality of a king. That, uh, so this first one says, Yata Isutyam Abhijata Kovida. That's so Abhijata Kovida, expert astrologers. They were expert astrologers at the time of birth of Maharaj Brexit. They were supported by the state. The, so the Karmakanda Brahmins, so it's important to note not all Brahmins in the Vedic system were the same, <laughs> that you have different kinds of Brahmins. So here you have the Karmakandi or the Karmakanda Brahmins. They would do the birthday ceremony. The, the Jnana Kandas would teach how to get liberation and they will lead the society towards moksha. Others would teach how to worship demigods. Srila Prabhupada says there are three kinds of Brahmas, Brahmins. That, uh, one type of Brahman, the blow in the ear, so that means he gives you the mantra in the ear. It's the guru. Another kind of Brahman blows into the conscious, that's puja. Another kind of Brahman blows into the fire. So when he cooks, <laughs> Srila Prabhupada said in that lecture, there are three kinds of blowing. Very funny. <laughs> yeah, Srila Prabhupada mentioned different kinds of Brahman, some of them very renounced. Text two. That, uh, King Parichit married the daughter of King Uttara and the god four sons headed by Maharaj Janamajaya. So Srila Prabhupada in his lecture on his first told the story of the Pandavas. When they were in exile in the forest staying with King Virat being in disguise at that time, Arjun was a dancing teacher of, he was a dance, dancing teacher of Uttaram. When they revealed their identity, then King Virat said to Arjun, take my daughter Uttara as your wife. But Arjuna said, I cannot do that. I'm a guru. He was, was his uh, dancing teacher. So she's like my daughter, how can I marry her? So, so, and therefore, 
Arjuna proposed that his son would marry her. This Abhimanyu mar 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 married Uttara, and their child was Pariksit. So Pariksit married Iravati, the daughter of Maharaj Uttara, who was the son of Virat and the maternal uncle of Maharaj Pariksit. So Srila Prabhupada gave the example of Arjuna and Subhadra. In some places in India, this is still going on. Cousins got married to one, one another. Srila Prabhupada's culture on this verse, uh, so, sorry, Srila Prabhupada's lecture on this verse, yeah, that uh, is very funny. This is, is what this lecture was on. Verse 3. And we'll first read verse 3. Maharaj Pariksit, after having selected Kripacharya for guidance as his spiritual master, performed three whole sacrifices on the banks of the Ganges. These were executed with sufficient rewards for the attendance. And at these sacrifices, even the common man could see demigods. Interesting. They could see demigods. Someone has seen demigods among you. <laughs> it's not common in these times. Srila Prabhupada's lecture on this verse, he says, some people may say, we don't see the demigods. We don't see the demigods these days. Srila Prabhupada said, and Srila Prabhupada replied, if you perform a whole sacrifice, then they will come. That uh, just like the president of a country, it doesn't come just for everyone to see, Srila Prabhupada says. Like the Prime Minister of India, when we opened our temple, he came for the opening. So, in order for him to come, they had to clear out the whole temple. The police were towing away all the cars and they were in front of the temple. They were afraid. That, the, the, that there might be some bump or something. That's a few years ago, well, 20 years ago, when the temple in Delhi opened, new temple. Not, uh, so why should you expect that the demigods should come for you to see? Even the minister, you can't see the prime minister. So there is another point. There was, there was interplanetary travel at that time. Demigods used to come and Arjun also went there, but not in spaceships. My Brexit was such a mahabharva that even the demigods would come. The common man could see the demigods, even though they were not qualified to see the demigods. That, uh, so, Sutta Goswami is beginning the story. But uh, once when Maharaj Pariksit was on his way to conquer the world, he saw the master of Kali Yuga, who was lower than a Sudra, disguised as a king and hurting the legs of a cow and bull. King at once got hold of him to deal to deal sufficient punishment. So we have here Maharaj Pariksit. Maharaj Pariksit means examiner, that uh, always examining, because he saw the Supreme Lord in the, in the womb of his mother, and that impression remained with him. And he was always checking everyone, is this the Lord I saw? He was comparing everyone with, with uh, the person he saw in the womb. That, and therefore it's called examiner. Is that person who I saw the same as in the womb? So my Brexit would go, go out of his kingdom to see that everyone was following the Vedic principles. That... And Shri Prabhupada says, yeah, every six months he would go out, or once a year. That, uh, so, like we discussed before, 
the sages give the laws and the chatriyas enforce the laws. So this is a, a most important thing for a chatriya. He must see if the people are following. That's his duty. And he saw here in here is someone who is not following. The chatriyas protect the cows. And he sees this person is dressed as a chatriya and he's beating the cows. Here Srila Prabhupada says, Nripa Linga Dharam. He was wearing the dress of a chatriya. You can tell who is a chatriya by how he behaves. They were dressed the same way. Parikshit was dressed as a chatriya. And Kali was dressed as a chatriya. But Kali was not acting as a chatriya. This is where the chatriya would control the Brahmins. If a Brahman would be fallen from his position and would not follow, then the Chatriya had the right to punish. As for Tam, we remember, he was a Brahman. He fell down and he was punished. And Krishna said, kill him. But then all, all many things were brought. <laughs> a Brahman has not to be killed. And finally, Arjun, had a solution that he, he cut off his hair. So that's the duty of a king. To see if everyone is following the religious principle and not simply to collect taxes. They were, yes, they have to collect taxes, but they would act for the benefit of the people only. So Sutta Goswami just started the story, but now we will see all of a sudden, Sanagarishis will interrupt him. We will see that Sutta Goswami is going to start three times the same story. This time, Sanaka, Sanagarishi interrupts him. Text five. That uh, Sanagarishi inquired. Why did Maharaj Brixit simply, pun simply punish him since he was the lowest of the sutras, having dressed as a king and having struck a cow with his leg? Please describe all these in in, in incidents if they relate to the topics of Lord Krishna. That's interesting. That, um, so, Saunaka often speaks, especially in the first and the second canto. Usually he's trying to clarify a point. But uh, first Sanaka, he says, he's astonished. Here is someone who is breaking the principles of religion. Why did Maharaj Pariksit not just kill him? So we hear Shilapal's purport. Saunaka and the Rishis were astonished to hear that a pious Maharaj Pariksit simply punished the culprit and did not kill him. They suggest that a pious king like Maharaj Pariksit should have at once killed an offender who wanted to cheat the public by dressing like a king and at the same time daring to insult to, daring to insult the purest of the animals, a cow. The Rishis in those days, however, could not even imagine that in advanced days, in the age of Kali, the lowest of Sudras will be elected as administrators and will open slaughterhouses for killing cows. So this is, this is a comparison here that, uh, yeah, between the Vedic kings protecting the cows and the mother kings opened slaughterhouses to kill the cows. Another comparison, he says, the sages could not imagine that, that this would be happening. So Sanaka is wanting to clarify the point 
and he wants to make sure that it is in relation to Krishna. Sutta, Sutta would do that, not do that, but Srila Prabhupada, the purport clarifies also this. He says that uh, further, let's see if we find it, yes, anyway, although hearing about the Sudraka, who was a cheat and insulter of a cow, was not very interesting to the great races. They nevertheless wanted to hear about it to see if it, if it had any connection with Krishna. That uh, for anything that is dovetailed, because they were simply interested in the topics of Lord Krishna. For anything that is dovetailed with the narration of Krishna's word hearing, that uh, there are many topics in, in the Bhagavatam about sociology, politics, economics, cultural affairs, etc. But all of them are in relation with Krishna. And therefore, all of them are what of hearing. Krishna is the purifying ingredient in all matters, regardless of what they are. In the Monday world, everything is impure to its being a product of the three mundane qualities. That, uh, so, we have seen that Sanaka Rishi, when he stopped, he stops answering questions like an, at the end of the third chapter. When, um, when sorry, when, when Sutta Goswami stopped answering questions like we find that at the end of the third chapter here. Then Shaunaka Rishi, he comes up and starts questions, asking questions. Again, we will hear Shaunaka Rishi in the second canto when Sukadev Goswami stops speaking. Then he says, then he will say, there must have been more discussion. Let's hear it. So Shaunaka is trying to get the kata going. And often when he talks, he's going to glorify it. It's going to glorify hearing and chanting of Srimad Bhagavatam. Because that is his purpose, to hear more Srimad Bhagavatam. It is, if it is Krishna conscious, then they will hear it. Otherwise, not. Text 6. The devotees of the Lord are accustomed to licking up the honey available from the lotus feet of the Lord. What is the use of topic? It is simply based of one's valuable life. That, uh, so, in the beginning of the purport, here, Srila Prabhupada makes a point. Hearing, a, hearing about the devotees is as good as hearing about Krishna. So, we read from the beginning of the purport that uh, Lord Krishna and his devotees are both on the transcendental plane. Therefore, the topics of Lord Krishna and his pure devotees are equally good. That uh, the battle of Kurukshetra is full of politics and diplomacy, but because the topics are related with Lord Krishna, the Bhagavad Gita is therefore adored all over the world. There is no need to eradicate politics, economics, sociology, etc., etc., which are mundane to the mundaners. To a pure devotee who is actually related with the Lord, such mundane things are transcendental if dovetailed with the Lord or with his pure devotees. So, Parikshit is related to Krishna, because Krishna protected him in the womb, he's following Lord Krishna. Then in the second paragraph of the purport here, Srila Prabhupada starts talking about time. So, he says, our duration is not very long. And there's no certainty of when we shall be ordered to leave anything for the next stage. 
this is our duty to see that not a moment of our life is wasted in topics who are, who are not related with Lord Krishna. Any topic over pleasant is not worth hearing if it's the void of its relationship of, to Krishna. So in, in chapter 5, Narada Muni has said the same thing. He said, Srila Vyasadev, if you talk about things that are not Krishna conscious, then it's going to agitate the mind, he said. A place of pilgrimage of crowds, that's what it is. A Paramahamsa, there's not the light in them. So Narada Muni said the same thing. And Srila Prabhupada, when he was lecturing on this verse, he said, yes, renunciation means renouncing. Renouncing speaking on any topic not related to Krishna. That, at the end of the purpose, Srila Prabhupada tells us what should be interested for hearing. Says, the spiritual planet Kaloka Vindavan, the eternal abode of Lord Krishna, is shaped like a whirl of a lotus flower. Even when the Lord descends to any of the mundane planets, he does so by manifesting his own abode as it is. Thus, his feet remain always on the big whirl of the lotus flower. His feet are also beautiful as the lotus flower. Therefore, it is said that Lord Krishna has lotus feet. So the truth is found, found in the heart of a pure devotee. That is why Yudhisthira Maharaj described Vidura as a place of pilgrimage, because he had Lord Krishna in his heart and therefore he could make every, everywhere, he could make it a holy place. The last purpose of this purpose is very nice, the last sentence of this purpose. Those who want to live forever without changing their material bodies should not waste valuable time with topics other than those related to Lord Krishna and his devotees. So now, Saunaka is going even to be more for forceful in his description why we should hear the glories about Krishna. Text 7. Yeah. O Sutta Goswami, there are those amongst men who desire freedom from death and get eternal life. They escape the slaughtering process of by calling the controller of death, Yamaraj. That's so it is said about Yamaraj. Before he calls you, you should call him to Kirtan. That, uh, and that's interesting that we will read the purpose of seven, inviting Mar Yamaraj to our kirtan. Very interesting. The living entity, as he develops from lower animal to higher human life and healthy, and healthy to higher intelligence, becomes anxious to get free and healthy anxious to get free from the clutches of death. Modern scientists try to avoid death by physiochemical advancement of knowledge. But alas, the control of death Yamaraj is so cruel that he does not spare even the life of the scientist himself. The scientist will put forward the terror of stopping death by advancement of scientific knowledge, becomes himself a victim of death and is called by Yamaraj. But to speak of stopping death, no one can enhance the short period of life even by a fraction of a moment. The only hope of suspending the cruel slaughtering process of Yamaraj is to call him to hear and chant the holy name of the Lord. Yamaraj is a great devotee of the Lord and he likes to be invited in kirtans and sacrificed by the pure devotees who are constantly engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. Thus the great sages headed by Sarnak and others invited Yamaraj to attend the sacrifice performed at Namisaranya. 
This was good for those who did not want to die. Very interesting. But, uh, so the stages, they invited Yamaraj for the class. <laughs> Text eight. So there it says, as long as Yamaraj, who causes everyone's death, is present here, no one shall meet with death. The great sages have invited the control of death, Yamaraj, who is representative of the Lord. Living beings who are on the script should take advantage by hearing the deathless nectar in the form of the narration of the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. So, so for the moment, we are also in the association of the sages. That means we are hearing from them. We are protected by, from Yamaraj. Yamaraj is a great devotee. So we should not be afraid. Yamaraj to, says to the Yamadutas, you go never near to those who chant the holy name of the Lord. Bring me those who have never chanted that. Shri Papa said, Yamaraj is like the police. He must make sure that everyone is following the law. So Yamaraj's duty is to make sure everyone is becoming Krishna conscious. He's not the enemy of everyone. He's, he's enemy to the criminals. So, so Papa told, told that story one time, along with Along with Srila Prabhupada, there was a police inspector. In the distance, they saw some people running away. And Srila Prabhupada, and then Srila Prabhupada asked the police inspector, who are these people? And the police officer said, they are criminals. They see me coming because they have the criminal, the criminal mentality and they have done a crime. They are running away from me. <laughs> Interesting. That is Yamaraj. Everyone is afraid of death because we are criminals. The devotee is not afraid. So, Srila Prabhupada gives here a very sobering instruction. He said, your death is stopped from the point you start your Krishna consciousness. Therefore, it is said in the verse, Aho Niloki Piyata Alas. In human society, that, uh, yes, Hari Lila, let them drink this transcendental pastimes, this Amrita, this nectar of eternal life. We have also heard that in the beginning of the Bhagavatam, 113, Bibatam Rasa Alayam, drink this nectar. Your ears are meant for this. Your eyes are meant to see Krishna. If you misuse it, then you will be caught. If you croak like the frogs, then the snake will come. If you talk nonsense, then Yamaraj is waiting. We should always chant and hear about Krishna. Shri Prabhupada brought up the argument that people say that devotees are also dying. They are dying like we are dying. What's the difference? But we have examples from the Bhagavatam. Ruva Maharaj, he stepped on the head of death into the Vaikuntha airplane. It's like the cat and the kitten. So, for the, for the rat, the cat is like death. And the cat takes the rat in the mouth, then, then the, the rat knows this is my end. But the kitten thinks, yeah, oh, my mother is taking care of me. So the devotee or deaf thinks, oh, Krishna is taking care of me. So Yamaraj is there to supervise that we may not fall down. Srila Prabhupada in a lecture said, Mm. That uh, just a moment, yeah. So Shila Popa in a lecture said, "Try to perceive the truth. Since you have begun Krishna consciousness, death has been stopped. 
but don't fall down and again capture death. That is a sober warning by Srila Prabhupada. It is small purple to text eight. Never read that. So every human being dislikes meeting death, but he does not know how to get rid of death. The surest remedy for avoiding death is to accustom oneself to hearing the nectarian pastimes of the Lord, as they are systematically narrated in the text of Srimad Bhagavatam. It is advised herein, therefore, that any human being who desires freedom from death should take to this course of life as recommended by the rishis headed by Sonaka. So, in Vrindavan, you see the devotees leave their, body, their bodies often. This is from, um, I think it was from Mother Narayani, she said, it is about Nam Hatadas. He was a devotee, a book distributor from Italy. He was 40 years old. Maybe that happened 20 years ago. He was on his deathbed. Before he left his body, he said, Bellissimo, most beautiful thing. And he left his body. It is quite different when a devotee dies, a big difference. Priti Putra Maharaj, who was a sannyasi and left ISKCON, I saw he phone, phoned him about memories of Srila Prabhupada. And the last time he phoned him, uh, his girlfriend answered the phone and, and she said that uh, a funny thing happened before he died. He was just lying down completely silent, silent and all of a sudden, he was standing up and opened his eyes and said, you have come. And then he died. Of course, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, he promises, In this endeavor, he says, there is no loss or diminution. And often a little advancement on this path protects one from the most dangerous type of fear. So the point is that we don't forget Krishna, but Krishna doesn't forget us. And Srila Prabhupada doesn't forget any little service we have done. So we should be serious and try to follow the instructions that we are learning here and practice throughout our lives. Sonaka is going to condemn lazy living beings. We will be hearing a lot about that in the second canton, text nine. So this is still Sonaka speaking. Lazy human beings with paltry intelligence and a short duration of life pass the night sleeping and the day performing activities that are, that are for naught that so we will hear that again in the second canto that we will hear 2 3 17 that's ayura rata by from some utyamastam siyana sota siyarta yaksino siksanoni ta utamasloka vastai both by rising and setting the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone except one who utilizes the time for discussing the topics of the all good personality of God. That, uh, that is Sonakarishi again speaking to Sutta Goswami in the second count. The rising and setting of the sun does not diminish the duration of life for one who hears constantly Krishna, Kata. There is a song of Bhakti Thakur and the translation is yeah. Chaitanya Mapa was preaching to the people. He said, you spent your nights uselessly sleeping, decorating, 
you have received this greatest gift of the human form, your body, not caring for the darling of your Suda. You slowly fall to your last moments until death. If every rising and setting of the sun, your days are lost. Why do you remain idle, not seeing the Lord in the heart? So this is the condition of today's people. This verse is reminding us yeah, that uh, we have also heard this verse in the first chapter of text 10. Yeah. Who learned in this age of Kali men have but short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and always disturbed. The sages of Namisaranya are repeating what we, are, what, what we heard in the first chapter. So these are people we are not here in Srimad Bhagavatam. Now we will hear and start hearing Sutta again, starting the narration again. That uh, he says, Sutta Goswami said, while Maharaj Brixit was residing in the capital of the Kuru Empire, the symptoms of the age of Kali began to infiltrate within the jurisdiction of his state. When he learned about this, he did not think the matter very palatable. This did, however, give him a chance to fight. He took, he took up his bow and arrows and prepared himself for military activities. So it's, it's in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Happy are the Chatriyas upon whom such fighting opportunity has come unsought opening the doors for heaven, for, for the heavenly planets, the Chatriyas are very happy. But also in the 18th chapter, verse 14, we have the quality of the Chatriya. Salmyam teodetik daksyam yudhisyap apalainam dhanam ishvara bhava shaksatram karmasva bhava cham. Heroism, power, determination, resourcefulness, courage in battle, Generosity and leadership, these are the qualities of the, of the work of the Chatriyas. They, <coughs> they don't run away from the battle. They like to have a good fight. Marge Brexit was a bit bored. He was sitting in his palace in his capital and there was no one against him in his kingdom. And he got a chance to show his Chatriya prowess. There's no one against him, but Kali has come. First he said, this is very bad. But then when he saw the fighting opportunity, he became very happy. Although it was not good news, he was very happy. Yeah. Nietzsche Sakra Vartite. Shila Prabhupada says that this Nietzsche Sakra Vartite is a circle. An emperor should be in the middle of the circle of the kingdom. Srila Prabhupada said that an emperor is also guru. Nietzsche means his own circle. So he was very happy that he could fight. So at the end of the purpose, it, it's so uh, let's see. Yeah, then at the end of the purport. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Just trying to locate where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a perfect shot here is always jubilant. As soon as you get, as you, as you get a, chime, a chance to fight. That uh, yeah, but we can remember the verse before. Lazy people will say, 
it is time for illicit sex gambling, and why not take advantage of it? It is predestined. predestined. I cannot help it. It's my karma. So what, what do we say to that? Human life is not meant for sleeping, meeting, eating, and defending. That, uh, so in the purport, that, uh, so if so, then why was the preparation for fighting out such symptoms, such arguments are offered by lazy and unfortunate men in the racist season? Rain is predestined, and yet people take precautions to protect themselves. Similarly, in the age of Kali, the symptoms as above mentioned are sure to infiltrate into social life, but it is the duty of the state to save the citizens from the association of the agents of, of the age of Kali. Now, it's Brexit wanted to punish the miscreants indulging in the symptoms of Kali, and thus save the innocent citizens who were pure in habit by the culture of religion. It is the duty of the king to give such protection. So Marge Brexit was perfectly right that uh, when he prepared himself to fight. That, uh, so who are Carly's agents? Carly's agents are uh, called lust, anger, greed, the slaughterhouses, the brothels, gambling houses. Later, later on in the Sanskrit, we will be named, they will be named the friends of Kali, all these things. And they came with him to help and disturb everyone. Read text 11. Maj Parikshit sat on a chariot drawn by black horses. His flag was marked with the sign of a lion. Being so decorated, he surrounded, he was surrounded by charioteers, cavalry, elephants, and infantry soldiers. He left the capital to conquer in all directions. So the he had the lion on his flag. So the Papa said it's it's not an ordinary lion. Who is the king of the lions? It's Narasimha Dev was on his flag, Srila Prabhupada said. So it's wonderful, a wonderful lion on the flag of Maharaj Pariksit. He could have said that I am in this very nice kingdom. Let me just sit here and enjoy it. No, he was always ready to go and see if everyone was following. In the Sanskrit of the verse, it says that he was Dikvijay. There, there is also Dikvijay in Chaitanya Saritamarita. Also, the, the, the Brahmanas are Dikvijay. What was there? Well, what was this Dikvijay? What did these Brahmans conquer? Knowledge, Prabhupada said. They, they were engaged in debate, and one who would defeat them, the other one, then would be the winner. They would agree on the base on Shastra. This is also the Vijay conquering. To conquer all, all other Chatriyas is per, that is the Vijay of Maharaj Brexit. So he would go all over the world and challenge. Is anyone not accepting my authority? If so, we will fight. Otherwise, you pay me tax. An emperor had to do that. that uh... So there is a very nice purport in the fourth canto. Shimabhata 4, 28, 29. This further describes what Maharaj Parikh is doing here. A Ma Bhagavad can prevail, can prevail over the opinions of all others. A strong devotee makes propaganda against all other spiritual conceptions, namely Jnana, Karma, and Yoga. So, with his devotion of flag inf inferred 
is all he always stands fast to fast to conquer other conceptions of transcendental realization. Wherever there is an argument between a devotee and a non-devotee, the pure strong devotee comes out victorious. That uh, this is a nice purport by Srila Prabhupada. In this verse, it is said, Rihata, he went out of his home. So Srila Prabhupada said, this applies to us. For a preacher, there has to be Dikvichai. Srila Prabhupada told us, we should go from county to country, village to village, town to town, and make Dikvichai, Srila Prabhupada said. Is our philosophy, God, this is our philosophy, God exists, we can prove God is there, come on, let's fight. Prabhupada's challenge was also Dikvijai. That, uh, so Prabhupada said that we should go on like that, all over the world. That, uh, when Srila Prabhupada comes to America, the first article in the newspaper, God exists. Yeah. The Swami comes to prove that God exists. God exists. That was a newspaper article yes? in the beginning when Srila Prabhupada was in New York. So, great translation of, translation of text 12. That, uh, Maharaj Pariksit then conquered all parts of the early plant, but Rashva, Ketumal, Parat, the northern Kuru, Kimpoos, etc., and exacted tributes from their respect respective rulers. So the whole purpose was to keep the whole world Krishna conscious. That, uh, Dharma sums up an Arthaya to re-establish the principles of religion. It is the same duty as Lord Krishna. That, uh, that, uh, so, read translations of the next three verses. Wherever the king visited, he continuously heard the glories of his great forefathers, who were all devotees of the Lord, and also of the glorious acts of Lord Krishna. He also heard how he himself had been protected by the Lord from the powerful heat of the weapon of Ashvatam. People also mentioned the great affection between the descendants of Vishnu and Prita due to the latter's great devotion to Lord Krishna. The king, being very pleased with the singers of such glories, opened his eyes in great satisfaction. Out of magnanimity, he was pleased to award them valuable necklaces and clothing. So, so we'll read the beginning of the second paragraph here. Yeah. So Krishna and his unalloyed devotees cannot be separated and therefore glorifying the devotee means glorifying the Lord and vice versa. Maharaj Pariksit would not have been glad to hear about the glories of his forefathers like Maharaj Pariksit and Arjun had they not been connected with acts of Lord Krishna. The same point as the sages, Srila Prabhupada makes here. If it has to do with Krishna, okay. Whenever he went, he heard the glories of his ancestors. So, an interesting comment by Prabhupada comparing the Vedic culture to the modern culture. He writes about the difference, Let's see, we find it, yeah, near, near the end, the difference between the presentation of welcome address today and in those days is that formally the welcome address were presented to a person like Maharaj Pariksit. The welcome address were full of facts and figures. 
and those presented such addresses were sufficiently rewarded, whereas in the present days, the welcome address are presented not always with factual statements, but to please the post holder, and often they, they are full of flattering lies, and rarely are those who present, present such welcome address rewarded by the poor receiver. That, uh, so, and so how they would welcome Marat's Brexit? By describing the glories of Krishna. And that was pleasing to Marat's Brexit. That, uh, so, translation of text 16. Marat's Brexit heard that out of his causeless mercy, Lord Krishna Vishnu, who is universally obeyed, rendered all kinds of service to the malleable sons of Pandu by accepting posts ranging from chariot driver to president to messenger, friend, night watchman, etc. According to the will of the Pandavas, obeying them like a servant and offering obeisance like a younger in years. When he heard this, Maharaj Pariksit became overwhelmed with devotion to the lotus feet of the Lord. Hmm. So, the first line of the purport that uh, so Lord Krishna is every, everything to the unalloyed devotees like the Pandavas. The Lord was for them the Supreme Lord, the Spiritual Master. How was Lord Krishna the Spiritual Master for the Pandavas? Because Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita, that uh, he was a guru to Arjuna, and the worshipful deity. Krishna was glorified during the Raja Suya sacrifice. Krishna was their guide, as mentioned. He was the child driver of Arjuna. He was the friend of Arjuna. He was the servant. Krishna washed the feet of all the guests at the Raja Suya sacrifice. But nobody else wanted to follow volunteer for this service. He was very humble. Karna was in charge of charity. Bhima in the kitchen. Everyone had their own desires. The messenger, it was the, Krishna was the messenger, the envoy from Yudhisthir to Duryodhan. And Krishna was pleading on behalf of Yudhisthir Maharaj, please let us not have this battle of Kurukshetra. And everything yeah, and so many other points that uh, so we can continue reading the purpose to the the purpose to text sixteen. So And thus the Lord also reciprocated the feelings of the Pandavas. Maharaj Pariksit, as a pure devotee of the Lord, could appreciate the Lord's transcendental reciprocation of the feelings of his devotees. And thus he himself also was overwhelmed with the dealings of the Lord. Simply by appreciating the dealings of the Lord with his pure devotees, one can attain salvation. Does the dealings with his devotees appear to be ordinary human dealings, but one who knows them in truth becomes at once eligible to go back home, back to God. The Pandavas were so malleable to, to the will of the Lord that they could sacrifice any amount of energy for the service of the Lord. And by such unalloyed determination, they could secure the Lord's mercy in any shape they desired that, uh, so so Shilpapa writes 
simply appreciating the dealings of the Lord with the devotees, and one can obtain salvation. That's quite an important statement, important for us. Do you want to have the mercy of the Lord in any shape you desire? But there is another side. What do you have to do for that? That's another side. That uh, my spreadsheet was appreciating the Lord's transcendental reciprocation. The appreciation was given given to us. This appreciation of the Lord and His devotees it will give us liberation and will bring us back to God. So how do devotees relate to Krishna? There is a story of the illiterate Brahmin in South India. He tried to read Bhagavad Gita and everyone was making fun of him. Then Lord Chaitanya came and uh, he saw this illiterate Brahmin trying to pronounce the verse of Bhagavad Gita and he pronounced everything wrong. That, uh, and people were making fun of him. He was sitting at the entrance of the temple and, and Lord Chaitanya said, yes, I see you are trying to read Bhagavad Gita, but that, uh, please tell me what you are doing. And the Brahman felt that Lord Chaitanya was not trying to make fun with him, that he was sincere in his question. So he said, my spiritual master has ordered me to read every day all the 18 chapters of Bhagavad Gita. But I'm illiterate, so I'm trying my best. But Lord Chaitanya said to him, but then I see tears are coming from your eyes. Why is that? Oh, the Brahman said, when I see the picture of Krishna and Arjun, and I see that Krishna is, is the child driver of Arjun, I become so overwhelmed and tears are coming from my eyes. Lord Chaitanya embraced him and said, you have obtained love of God. In the seventh canto, we have also Yudhisthira Maharaj was appreciating Pralat Maharaj as a great devotee. But Narada Muni said, you, you, you see Pralat as a great devotee, but you are more fortunate than Pralat. Krishna is living with you in your palace, is acting as your messenger. And Arjun, yeah, we have also the story, of course, when Abhimanya was killed, the son of uh, Arjun. Arjun vowed to kill Jayadrata before sunset. And Krishna drove the chariot very fast because they, they had made a spear formation 25 miles here to go <laughs> to, 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 to get close to Jayadrata. And Krishna was taking care of the horses. That, uh, just by appreciating that, we can go back to God. That, um, in Nectar of Devotion is mentioned one of the qualities of Krishna is Dira Prashanta. So Yudhisthira was elderly to Krishna and Krishna gave his opinion in a very humble way to Yudhisthira Maharaj. So that's the Vedic culture that uh, now Verse 17. Now you may hear from me what happened while Maharaj Pariksit was passing his days, hearing of the good occupations of his forefathers and be absorbed in thought of them. So yesterday we heard a description of Maharaj Pariksit left his kingdom. Oh, sorry not yesterday, a few moments ago, in the beginning, we heard how Maharaj Pariksit left his kingdom to go on a tour. But as soon as Sutta Goswami started speaking, 
Salnaka had interrupted him because Sutta Goswami said that Maharaj Pariksit said that Maharaj Pariksit and he saw Sudra in the dress of a king hunting a cow and a bull and he decided to punish him. The Sonaka was surprised, he said, why did he punish him and not just kill him? And along with that Sonaka, she said, we want to hear about it as long as it relates to Krishna. Then he went on glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam and he said that we have invited Yamaraj to the sacrifice to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. I'm just recapping a little. He should be invited. Srila Prabhupada said, to the kirtans and sacrifices. Because as long as Yamaraj is there, no one fears death. So he went on to glorify the hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam and he started to get on the case of those who do not hear. And Sonaka will do that again and again in the beginning of the second canto we heard. He will start glorifying the hearing, reading and chanting of the Bhagavatam and chanting the holy name, and then really we will get, we will get on the case of people who don't want to hear or misuse their ears. Their ears are like snake holes and tongues like frogs, you will say. So Maharaj Brixit was ruling very peacefully. No one would challenge him. Everyone in his kingdom was happy, but Kali entered his kingdom. Maharaj Brixit was happy to get the news, to have an opportunity to fight. He went out of his palace to see that everyone was following religious principles. And he saw Kali beating a bull and a cow. Now we will hear the conversation between Dharma, the bull, and Bhumi, the cow. And that's very interesting. The first verse describes how Maharaj Brexit was absorbed in thinking of his ancestors, the Pandavas, both with some victim of a hum, being absorbed in the thoughts of his ancestors. Actually, Yudhisthira Maharaj had this question. We may remember of the first canto, the, the 12th chapter. Will this child be on the level of his forefathers? He asked there. Maharaj breaks it. And, uh, yeah, he had the same thought, thought, thought. He was thinking, now his forefathers were gone. They left. He was thinking, am I following my forefathers? Prove his son. That day after day he was absorbed. Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing like Arjun and Yudhisthira? Am I following? This was where Maharaj Pariksit mind was. He was always thinking and checking himself. Am I acting as a Rajarsi? So he was very, very responsible. That uh, he was very responsible. He always wanted to keep himself in the position of a Rajarsi, a saintly king. This is where it starts. Now Srila Prabhupada said that because nowadays we have rascals and fools they cannot understand whether Kali has entered the kingdom because they, are, they themselves are agents of Kali. If you are sick, you don't know what it means to be healthy. Officers of today's government are all following Kali. Then how can they know that Kali has entered their kingdom? Of course, they are helping Kali to flourish in their kingdom. So they won't understand. But Pariksit was not like that. He was a Rajarsi. He could understand what it meant that Kali entered his kingdom. And he was ready to stop Kali. We will hear about that in chapter 17. There is actually, where, where he actually will, he will be able to stop Kali. So Papa will give us nice practical suggestions to stop calling. We hear, we'll hear that tomorrow. Now we will hear the conversation between Dharma, the bull, and Bhumi, the cow. And within these conversations, it will be revealed how Kali entered the kingdom. What are the symptoms of Kali entering? 
cell text 18. Dharma in the form of a bull asked, Madam, are you not hale and hearty? Why are you covered with the shadow of heat? It appears by your face that you have become black. Are you suffering from some internal disease or are you thinking of some relative who is away in a distant place? In the, in the Purpose Shila part, explains the importance of the bull and the cow in society. Read purpose from the beginning until joyful mood, but now the cows are not in a joyful mood. They are going to the slaughterhouses. Shila Prabhupada say at the end of the purpose, says, that's of, uh, yes, says from Brahminical culture. Um, from, Mm -hmm. Yeah, the bull and the cow can be protected for the good of human society simply by spreading of Brahminical culture as the topmost perfection of all cultural affairs. The advances, advancement of such culture, the morale of society is properly maintained and so peace and prosperity are also attained with, without, without extraneous effort. When Brahminical culture deteriorates, the cow and the bull are mistreated, and the resultant actions are prominent by the following system symptoms, which we will hear now in 19. That uh, Dharma in the form of a bull as that I think. I skipped one verse, I read them again, 1819. The pers personality of religious principles, Dharma was wandering about in the form of a bull. And he met the personality of earth in the form of a cow who appeared to grieve like a mother who had lost her child. She had tears in her eyes and the beauty of her body was lost. This Dharma questioned the earth as follows. Dharma in the form of a bull asked, Madam, are you not hale and hearty? Why are you covered with the shadow of grief? It appears by your face that you have become black. Are you suffering from some internal disease or are you thinking of some relative who is in a distant place? That, uh... So the first question was about health. Do you have a problem with your health? And you just asked Arjun, you just asked Arjun, does the previous chapter, I've never seen you like this. Are you sick? Like you just was asking so many questions and finally asked, is it because Krishna had left? We can see the same pattern here when Dharma is questioning the cow. He will ask so many questions and at the end he will ask, is it because of your separation from Krishna? Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport that, uh, so, it's 19, the people, purport 19, the people in the world in this age of Kali are always full of anxieties. Everyone is diseased with some kind of ailment. From the very faces of the people of this age, one can find out the index of the mind, he said here, the index of the mind. So, so, so I, I remember 20 years ago when I went on Fudge Mantel Park, um, I did it three times a whole month. And you see all these people in the villages in Fudge, and they are basically all happy, smiling. Then you come in the West and you see, you look at the people's faces and just by looking at them, 
you become depressed, <laughs> you feel depressed. They are so disturbed that, uh, yeah. so what, what, what do you see on the peer? Oh, in the faces of people. So Papa said, it's the index of the mind, all their distress that uh, takes 20, that, uh, so I have lost my three legs and I'm, I'm now standing on one only. Are you lamenting for my state of existence? The bull who is asking to the cow. Are you in great anxiety? Because henceforward, the unlawful meat eaters will exploit you? Or are you in a sorry plight? Because the demigods are now bereft of their share of sacrificial offerings? Because no sacrifice are performed at present? Are you grieving for living beings because of their sufferings due to famine and drought? That um, so we have here a bull. Imagine a bull standing on one leg. It sounds quite mystical, right? Is it possible that uh, when when I was in this twenty years ago, I was in Vrindavan uh, at that time. Kurma Rupa at his koshal. And I would visit him, and there was a bull who had three, three legs. So that's quite possible, but, but one leg, we never seen that. So this picture is, is, yeah, is representing the state of religion in the age of Kali. There's one leg, and even that leg, Kali is beating. Just last leg is truthfulness. That uh, the bull is asking, are you lamenting because of my state? Are you lamenting because in the future you will see how meat eaters are going to exploit you? That uh, in the second uh, to the last paragraph, Shri Papad says that. That's in the last paragraph. This material world is a sort of prison. As we have several times mentioned, the demigods are the servants of the Lord who see to proper upkeep of the prison house. These demigods want to see that the rebel living beings who want to survive fate faithlessly are hardly turned towards the supreme power of the Lord. Therefore, the system of offering sacrifice is recommended in the scriptures. So why is this world like a prison? First, we are engaged in the body. When you try to enjoy in the prison, then you get beaten. Bhagavad Gita 5.22 when you try to break out, the alarm goes off, the guards start chasing you, then everything is against you unlawfully. But three kinds of suffering are disturbing you. Adi Deva, Adi Atmika, Adi Bodhika. You are controlled by these three modes. We are in this universal shell that uh, Yes, that, so this is, what is the lawful way to get out of the prison? So Sri Papa tries, the demigods want to see that the rebel living beings who want to survive faithlessly are held they turn towards the supreme power of the Lord. Therefore, the system in offering sacrifice is recommended in the scriptures, that's the point just to get out, that, that's a lawful way to get out of the prison. That, uh, so a little further down, down that uh, I think a 
For the devotees, there is no need for performance of prescribed sacrifices because the very life of a devotee is symbol of sacrifice. How is that? How is the life of a devotee a symbol of sacrifice? Because the devotee performs selfless service. If we simply serve the Lord, the demigods are happy. Our whole life should be a sacrifice. So we hear this Bhagavatam and we must get out the spiritual techniques to apply in our, in our lives. So please, if you ask questions, ask questions about the spiritual techniques. Don't ask me questions about detail of Mahabharat and so on. I don't know much about that. And that's not so important also. The techniques are important. That's why we have these sessions. We hear and we try to understand how to apply this in our lives. Like we have had my good friend Sankirtan Prabhu from Switzerland. He left his body a few years ago. But it is the, he dedicated his life to preaching in China. He was from Switzerland. He learned Chinese. He was in China preaching. Very dangerous. But he sacrificed his life. That uh, at, at the end of the Pope, it says, Doce Tanya, he recommended only one sacrifice, or sacrifice called the Sankirtan Jaya, the chant of Hare Krishna, in which everyone can take part. Thus, both the votes and fruitive workers can derive equal benefit from the performance of Sankirtan Jaya. Text 21. Are you feeling compunction for the unhappy women and children who are bereft? forlorn by unscrupulous persons? Or are you unhappy because the goddess of learning is being handled by Brahmins addicted to acts against the principles of religion? Or are you sorry to see that the Brahmins have taken shelter of administrative families who do not respect the Brahmin Brahminical culture? So we see the words in that condition. So many single mothers, the women and children are not properly protected, the brahmins and cows are not protected, that uh, you can see in the beginning of the purple. In the age of Kali, the women and the children along with Brahman, brahmins and cows will be grossly neglected and left unprotected. So in the middle of the part of, of the paragraph, Srila Prabhupada speaks about the Brahmins. The Brahman, Brahmins are traditionally intelligent and thus they will be able to pick up modern education to topmost ranks. So many Brahmins are going to America so that you get a, you get a nice IT job, a computer job. That's the state. Previously, in India, the center was liberation. That was the goal. Now it's simply money. It's about maintaining oneself, eating, sleeping, meeting, and defending the purpose. But as far as moral and religious principles are concerned, they shall be the, they shall be the most fallen. Education and bad character go ill together. But such things will run parallel. The administrative heads yeah, will run parallel. That, uh, so, what is the analogy we heard in Shiz Upanishad about education? A snake with a jewel on his head is such more, da more dangerous than an ordinary snake. Modern education is like a jewel on the head of a snake, a cobra. That is what is happening. Brahmins are giving up their culture and are going for modern education. Srila Prabhupada discusses a Sanskrit word from the verse in a lecture on this verse. 
פורסדך יפח תם. ‫לבוא פורסדך, ‫מינס מן איטס, רק שעסס. ‫היא באה לקבל לקצר, ‫אין הווי על זה פרס. ‫אני פוסט את השאלה ‫לדבר על זה. ‫אם קניבלס יפתחו את השטח ‫של הווי ‫ולהתחיל להתחיל את האנשים, ‫מה אתה עושה? ‫מה זה הראשון שאתה עושה ‫אם אתה שומע שהקניבלס יפתחו? ‫ואתה חושב שבקשר עם זה הראשון, ‫אתה תקבל את הראשון האנשים. ‫שאלה פופאט אומר, ‫הראשון הראשון צריך להיות ‫להתחיל את הראשון של הראשון של הראשון של הראשון. ‫אם אתה רוצה שיקום, ‫אתה תקבל את הראשון של הראשון ‫של הראשון של הראשון. This is the Vedic culture. We heard at the end of the eighth chapter that Yudhisthir was very upset. He was thinking that I've killed many boys and friends and women. This is a big concern for one who is an emperor. Now to text 22. The so-called administrators are now bewildered by the influence of this age of Kali. And thus they have put all state affairs into disorder. Are you now lamenting this disorder? Now the general populace does not follow the rules and regulations for eating, sleeping, drinking, mating, etc. And they are inclined to perform such anywhere and everywhere. Are you happy, unhappy because of this? That so eating, sleeping, fearing and mating ‫היא לא מגיעה בקהל יוגה. ‫אבל יש עוד דרך לראות את זה פרס. ‫שילה פרופאט אומר את זה ‫באלקציה. ‫עכשיו, כל העולם, ‫הילדים והילדים, ‫אין להם סיכוי. ‫איפה הם יאכלו, 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 ‫איפה ‫בגלל שאני חושב, ‫אני חושב, ‫האם זה אמריקה? ‫איך יכול להיות שהם אנשים? ‫אז הוא היה מאוד מאוד ‫שאנשים עומדים בבית בבית. ‫כשהוא היה באמריקה, ‫הוא שמע את הדבר הזה, ‫הוא שאל את הדבר הזה, ‫הוא שאל את הדבר הזה, ‫אני יכול לקחת את הדבר הזה, ‫אם אתה זוכר, ‫פרופאט הראשון, ‫שהוא היה בניו יורק, ‫הוא היה בניו יורק, ‫הוא היה בניו יורק, ‫הוא היה בניו יורק, ‫הוא היה בניו יורק, There was no facility, no bathroom or anything. Another way to understand this first is that there is no facility for these things. People are so unsafe, leaders cannot even provide them a place to eat. That is a symptom, symptom of Kali, Kali Yuga. And why is it so? Upasritstan, they are bewildered. Rastrani, this is a state of affairs because of the leaders. These things are happening. In Sivan Bhagavatam, we will find everything we need for living. We heard about astronomy, astrology, atomic theory, etc. We'll find in Sivan Bhagavatam, we will hear next year or, or, or in the next cantos about the theory of the atom. If you study Sivan Bhagavatam, you will know everything. Text 23. A mother earth The Supreme Personality of, of Godhead and he incarnated himself as Lord Sri Krishna just to unload your heavy burden. All these activities here are transcendental and they cement the path of liberation. Are you now bereft of his presence? You are probably now thinking of those activities and feel sorry in their absence. So here we come to the real point. Krishna is left and Kali, Kali has come. That, uh, the hour Krishna left the planet, Kali enters. Krishna went out, Kali entered. Lord Krishna came to relieve the burden of the earth and then he left. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada will pick up on the word Nirvana. We will read. The, the purport, uh, the text 23, 20, yeah. Mm -hmm. 23, the activities of the Lord, 
And, uh, yeah, the activities of the Lord include liberation, but they are more relishable than the pleasure derived from nirvana or liberation. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, Vishwana Sakavarti Thakur, the word used here is nirvana, vilambitani. That which minimizes the value of liberation. To attain nirvana, liberation, one has to undergo a severe type of tapasya austerity, but the Lord is so merciful that he incarnates to diminish the burden of the earth. Simply by remembering such activities, one can defy the pleasure derived from nirvana and reach the transcendental abode of the Lord to associate with him, eternally engaged in his blissful, loving service. The, the, the stress is here on remembering. Take the thought of remembering and you cut the knot of karma. So Srila Prabhupada gave a lecture on this verse 23 and he made his own translation which is completely different from this translation. It's a different way of saying it. He says the Supreme Personality of God it. O Mother Earth, the Supreme Personality of God it, Hari incarnated himself as Lord Sri Krishna just to unload the heavy burden. All these activities here are transcendental and they cement the path of liberation. You are bereft of his presence and you are now probably thinking of these activities and feeling sorry in their, in their absence. That's the translation. And now can we can hear the translation of Prabhupada. On the account of the absence of Krishna, our real business, Nirvana, has been delayed. It is why you are lamenting. This is quite a different way of saying the, the same verse. This is from a lecture in Los Angeles, 1979, 1974, Los Angeles, verse 24. Mother, you are the reservoir of all riches. Please inform me of the root cause of your tribulations by which you have been reduced to such a weak state. I think that the powerful influence of time which conquers the most powerful might have forcibly taken away all, you, all your fortune, which was adorned even by the demigods. So, so what is an example of the effects of time? that uh, we have old age, of course, six stages of that. Uh, all the suffer sufferings of the Pandavas was due to time. Srila Prabhupada said, when I was young and beautiful, everyone loved me, but now that I'm old, nobody likes. This is the influence of time. You cannot check it. Even the most beautiful, youthful person has to become old. We get wrinkles. You cannot stop it. But in the West, they try. But whatever makeup they put on, you still see they can't hide it. But the wonderful thing is that you are not this body. We are happy. We don't mind as long as we can serve Krishna. In Srimad Bhagavatam, they said that old age is very helpful for a devotee. So we can learn in old age to become closer to Krishna. Kalena vate balinam balasya se. That uh, Shila Prabhupada, he, he talks very powerful here when he talks about time. Even he says, we have to save time. How can we stop this process of sunset and sunrise taking away our own lives? Of course, we have heard, heard before during invite Maharaj to the lake, Yamaraj to the, uh, the Krishna Kata. So Srila Prabhupada said that we have to chant and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. In that way, we will save time. Then time cannot touch us. Our, our death is stopped, engaged in spiritual activities. Then we can conquer time. So this is what we can do. We can hear this again. And again, and we will hear that in the second canto, in the verse 
sauna care she will speak again. Are you allowed to buy pump some? Utyamasam siyana sota siyatiyat sanoni time. Utyamas loka vaktay. Both by rising and sitting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except when we utilize the time by discussing topics of the all good personality of God. So, Sonakarishi to Sutuka Swami. This is the point time takes everything away, and we can't get hold of it. But we, we can make progress in Krishna consciousness. Now, the cow is going to reply. And she will get right to the point here. 25. The reply of the cow to the bull. The earthly deity in the form of a cow does reply to the, to the personality of religious principles in the form of a bull. O Dharma, whatever you have inquired for me shall be known to you. I shall try to reply to all those questions. Once, once you too were maintained by your four legs and your increased happiness all over the universe by the mercy of the Lord. That. So what's the most important point Srila Prabhupada pointed out from this first? He says his four legs. Just as a table has usually four legs, animals need four legs. Dharma need four le legs. Dharma, Satyam, Daya, Satyam. In his lecture, Srila Prabhupada said, Dharma, Arta, Kama, Moksha are also four, four legs of religion. Also, Brahma, Vaisha, Kshatra, Sudra, also. Brahmacharya, Gyasta, Vanaprasa, Sanyas, also. These all require four legs. There must be four there. They form a steady foundation. Thus the bull has lost his, his legs three. And therefore everything is in chaos. When the Lord was there, everyone was happy. Now that the Lord is, is gone, everything has become auspicious. And now we will, we will hear the verses 26 to 30. The call continues and she gives a whole list. In him reside truthfulness, cleanliness, intolerance and of other unhappiness, the power to control anger, self-satisfaction, straightforwardness, steadiness of mind, control of sense organs, responsibility, equality, tolerance, equanimity, faithfulness, knowledge, absence of sense enjoyment, leadership, chivalry, influence, the power to make everything possible, the discharge of proper duty, complete independence, dexterity, fullness of all beauty, serenity, kind-heartedness, in ingenuity, gent gentility, magnanimity, determination, perfection in all knowledge, proper execution, possession of all, all objects of enjoyment, that joyfulness, immovability, fidelity, fame, worship, brightlessness, be, being as the personality of Godhead, eternity and many other transcendental qualities which are eternally present are never separate from him, that personality of God, that there is a, the reservoir of all beauty. Lord Krishna has now closed his transcendental pastimes on, on the earth. In his absence, Kali has spread its influence everywhere. So I'm sorry to see the condition of existence. So the bull asked the problem. He asked the problem and the cow replied that there are 40 things that I'm missing. That, mm. These are the qualities of Krishna and I'm missing Krishna. Of course, at the end, she said she feels the lack of all these good qualities because Kali is manifesting his influence. Just like when Krishna was there, he was manifesting all those wonderful qualities. 
all the devotees surrounding Krishna were also manifesting these qualities. So Kali entered the state, entered the world, the homes and the heart of all people. Kali's everywhere, so that, that the qualities of the people were all lost. Srila Prabhupada on this first said, the people have become sinful, the qualities have been covered by Kali. We need to revive these qualities. They are we all within, of, within us. 21. I'm thinking about myself and also obest, obest among the demigods about you, as well as all the demigods, sages, denizens of Vitriloka, devotees of the Lord, and all men obedient to the system of Varna and Ashram in human society. So what is this group of people that she's thinking about? What is her concern? Or do we have all these people in common? They are suras, devas, they are all obedient devotees. She's concerned with the devotees. That, uh, yes. Hmm. So, text 32, 33. Yeah, probably going to the end. Lakshmiji, the goddess of fortune, whose glance of grace was sought by the demigods like Brahma, and for whom they surrendered many a day unto the personality of Godhead, gave up her own abode in the forest of lotus flowers and engaged herself in the service of the lotus feet of the Lord. I was endowed with specific powers to supersede the fortune of all the three planetary systems by being decorated with the impressions of the flag, thunderbolt, elephant, driving rod, and lotus flower, which are the signs of the lotus feet of the Lord. But at the end, when I felt I was so fortunate, the Lord left me. So... She was very fortunate, but in the midst of her great fortune, then Krishna left. Srila Prabhupada in the pur purpose brings up an interesting question at the end, the first paragraph of the purport that uh, is at the end. So, just a moment, since it's at the end of the first paragraph, yeah. One may ask how we can attain the Supreme Lord on this earth after his mission is fulfilled and he has left for this earth for his own abode. The answer is that there is no need to detain the Lord. The Lord, being omnipresent, can be present with us if we want him at all. By his omnipresence, he can always be with us if we are attached to his devotional service by hearing, chanting, remembering, etc. That, uh, so, somewhere or other, we are. Krishna is all pervading, but somewhere or another, we have all managed to disconnect with Krishna. But the question is, if nothing is disconnected with Krishna, then what does it mean to be disconnected? Right? It's a covering of our consciousness. So that is what is disconnected. Our consciousness is, dis is disconnected. That... Actually, we are not disconnected, but we think we are disconnected. So we are acting like we are disconnected. Everyone is acting like they are disconnected from Krishna. So therefore, the analogy is given here, just like a shell, like a hand is cut off from the body. Because we want to be cut off. We are cutting ourselves off from Krishna. Therefore, Krishna consciousness means to connect the only thing we have to learn is to how to execute or excavate 
the source of connection, find the source of connection, excavate is an interesting verse that Schilbert's using here. Archaeologi archaeologists, they excavate, excavate the source of connection. We must excavate the source of connection and again be linked with him by our fenceless devotion and service. Then we can again be disconnected, be con then we can again be connected with him. We have the second paragraph that uh, it, it, ex it explain, explains. We can be connected with him. That is second paragraph, a few lines down. We can be connected with him by the transcendental sound representation. The holy name of the Lord and the Lord himself are identical. And one would chance the holy name of the Lord in an offensive manner cannot, cannot once realize that the Lord is present before him. Even by the vibration of the radio sound, we can partially realize sound relativity. And by resounding the sound of transcendence, we can fairly feel the presence of the Lord. In this age, when everything is polluted by the concrete contamination of Kali, it is instructed in the scriptures and preached by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that by chanting the holy name of the Lord cannot at once be free from the contamination and shall rise to the status of transcendence and go back to God. The offenseless chanter of the holy name of the Lord is, not suspicious, is as suspicious as the Lord himself and the movement of pure devotees of the Lord all over the world Cannot, cannot once change the troublesome face of the, of the world. Only by propagation of the chanting of the holy name of the Lord can we immune from all the effects of the age of Kali. That, uh, so, Mother Narayani said, my last service was to do Harinam, my first service when she joined in the 70s in America. My first service, she said, was to do Harinam from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. You can imagine how immune we were from the effects of Kali. We were eating out in the park for lunch and we went back for 6, for 6 p.m. dinner, Arti, and then again the evening on the streets. But when you chant the holy name, then you feel immune of the effects of Kali. But the trick is to be always chanting. We heard before that when the, when the rain is coming, then you need to take an umbrella, calamity after calamity, misery after misery. It's raining, especially when you get older, the body becomes a source of all miseries. And what do you do for this rain or, or miseries? Take an umbrella. And what is the umbrella? Harinam Sankirtan, chanting the holy name. This is our umbrella that we keep on our head. Another interesting point in this verse is about the lotus feet of the Lord. That uh, so we can go back to the purport that, uh, yes, when Lord Krishna was present on this earth, the impressions of the special signs of the lotus feet were stamped on the dust. And as a result of this specific grace, the whole earth was made as perfect as possible. Just imagine if you have the signs of the lotus feet of the Lord all over your body. This is what the earth was experiencing. That, uh, that, so, this, uh, this is from a booklet, The Lotus Feet of the Lord. Just a few sentences. Simply by meditating on Krishna's lotus feet, one attains all material and spiritual fortune and beauty, good qualities and wealth. They are the abode of all pastimes. May those feet be, be, be our everything. Even a slight worship of Krishna's feet turns a mere stone into a Shintamani gem, an ordinary cow into a Kamadenu. They fulfill all the desires of living beings who will not take shelter, who will not take shelter of these lotus feet. So the earth was being transformed in Shintamani. 
and all these our desires were being fulfilled. The dust of Vrindavan can fulfill all desires, it said. Earth could thus also fulfill everyone's desires. Text 34. For personality of religion, I was greatly overburdened by the undue military phalanxes arranged by atheistic kings, and I was relieved by the grace of the personality of God. Similarly, uh, you were also in, in a distressed condition, weakened in your standing strength, and thus he also incarnated by his eternal energy in the family of the Yadus to relieve you. It's 35. Who therefore can tolerate the pangs of separation from that Supreme Personality of God? He could conquer the gravity and pas passionate wrath of his sweethearts like Satyabam by his sweet smile of love, pleasing glance and hearty appeals. When he turns first my earth's surface, I would be immersed in the dust of his lotus feet and thus would be sumptuously covered by with grass which appeared like hair standing on me out of pleasure. So we heard about the separation of the devotees in his in Astinapur, when Krishna was leaving, they couldn't stop themselves from crying. The Pandavas were always with Krishna, and then he left. But the earth was always with Krishna. Imagine the feelings of separation she was feeling. This is the problem. That uh, Dharma asked her so many questions. Now, this is the problem. It is not something material, her problem. This is everyone's real problem our separation from Krishna. Our real problem is that we are separated from Krishna. Our consciousness is separated from Krishna and we are suffering. We are disconnected because we are disconnected. We don't see Krishna and we don't see his presence. We are suffering, we are miserable. To get solace is to connect ourselves again with Krishna. And how to do that is by hearing the Bhagavatam. We get solace from our separation from Krishna. By chanting Hare Krishna, we have Krishna, we heard. So the Prabhupada said, the movement of the devotees over the earth, that will give the earth solace for our separation from Krishna. This is very auspicious. The last verse, when the earth and the personality of God were thus engaged in conversation, the saintly king Karikshit reached the shore of the Sarasvati river, which flowed toward the east. So next chapter, Sutta Goswami will start the story again for a third time and follow it up to its conclusion. So tomorrow, next lesson, we will hear our marriage breaks. It will challenge Kali and stop him from entering his kingdom. So this was uh, an overview, a quick overview of this 16th chapter. Now on the screen, you will see a question. Describe the importance of protecting the cow and the bull for maintaining a peaceful society. You can write a few sentences or one sentence in the chat, uh, very short. So, the time is now, I think, it's um, three past ten, so we will resume at quarter past ten. You can put your answers in the chat and uh, we will also look at some of the questions related to spiritual techniques on the, in the chat. Thank you very much. See you in 10 minutes again. Hare Thank Krishna. you. We are back. Uh, we will look at certain of the questions. This was the man Kali here in this chapter. Kali himself. Or was he only under the influence of Kali and the Kali Yuga? And because and it's because of this cult, the personified Kali. We will hear more about it in the next chapter tomorrow. 
you have Kali Yuga, the influence of Kali, but you have also the personality of Kali. Kali is also a person. And we'll, uh, we'll hear, hear about that person tomorrow. Next question. What is the reason for the sinful reactions that we need to take birth in Kali Yuga if no one, no protection for anyone? Yes, those who have, who have very sinful, great sinful reactions, they take birth in Kali Yuga. You need to have a lot of bad karma to take birth in Kali Yuga. So we should not think everything will go nice in our lives. For no, for no one in Kali Yuga, life is nice. So many difficulties and reactions that uh, we see that especially today. That, uh, so yes, it's because of our own past sinful reactions that we take birth in Kali Yuga. But we will learn also to know that this Kali Yuga has also advantages, also advantages. In 6, 1, 6, in 25, it's mentioned how Dharma is reduced to a fraction and devastation takes place. While the number of people killed in the Mahabharat, which was before Kali Yuga, was also very fast, and Sharad Sanda had killed many kings and imprisons, many, less many, many more. So did the devastation not start before? <clears throat> and even in Dvapara Yuga, especially at the end, it came towards Kali Yuga. Why did Krishna appear? Because all these Chatriyas were, were not following the Brahmins. They were acting for their own pleasure, and that was the problem. That, uh, and that is Kali Yuga. Yes, that's, but the influence of Kali Yuga was not very strong yet, because Krishna was there. Therefore, Kali Yuga could not real, really take off, because Krishna kept it at bay. That, uh, and during the, and during, during the reign of Maharaj Brexit and, and, and before Maharaj Yudhisthira, everything was all right. But we will hear tomorrow how that changed. That, uh, but it's, it's, it's a good, good point you are making. Yeah, this, that it was Tvapra Yuga means the cow, the, the bull had only two legs and had already lost two others. So, vice is introduced already. It was already in, introduced in Tetra Yuga. Next, I think these are the answers on our question. The cow and bull are integral part of Vedic society. Cows give milk and bulls are used for blowing and growing food, as Prabhupada says, little land and a cow is enough for humans to live peacefully. Also, cows are very dear to Krishna, and all the other demigods are seated in, in her. Therefore, it's the duty of humans to protect, to take care of them. So the Lord's pleasure. Krishna is Govinda. Yes, if we take care of the cows, Krishna is pleased. Very pleased. That's a very nice comment. Cow and bull protection are very important. Otherwise, one is not a civilized society. Kobumane Taita. Yeah. That the cow and the brahman are very important. Otherwise, there is no civilization. That is also an important point. What is a civilization? These are signs of civilization protecting the cows in the ground. Cows give us milk while bull gives us rain. The human society sustains on these two and they give sanctified foodstuff. Yeah. This is from the Shandogya Upanishad. We have a scholar here 
who gives us more information. A viper forms of Czechia, once eatables become sanctified by eating some sanctified foodstuff, one's very existence becomes purified by the purification of existence, finer tissues in memory become sanctified. And when memory is sanctified, one can think of the power of liberation. And all this combined together lead to Krishna consciousness, the greater necessity of society. Good point. Bull and cow are necessary for production of grains and milk, miracle food, on which the human being sustains. And the Brahminical culture can advance only when the man is educated and is, has developed the mode of goodness. For that there is a prime necessity of food prepared with milk as it contains all the necessary vitamins to sustain human psychological conditions for higher achievement. That, uh, yeah, Srila Prabhupada used to say it's uh, a wonder food, that uh, milk. Of course, milk in this age is contaminated because the cows are injected with so many things, which may become dangerous to drink milk even. They have polluted everything. Bulls and cows are, are, are to, to be protected for the good human society, moral of society, will be maintained. Our Brahminical culture will deteriorate as cows gives the miracle food, miracle food, that's the point here, yeah, and bulls help in production of grains. Yeah, these are important points. It helps us to live simple, Prabhupada. That it gives you all what you need because the cow is the mother and gives milk, which is good for us. Brahminical tendency. The cow is represented by Dharma, principles of religion, that uh, religious principles are necessary for maintaining peaceful society. So without religious principles, society, the headless society, will be in misery always. No peace in society. Those cows also help for maintaining Brahminical culture. Yes. Shilamai, the bull and cow give all the essences for Brahminical culture, but helps man to food grains and other produce from the land. Mother cow gives milk and milk products like ghee, which are required for healthy living and chakya. Together, they coexist peacefully and fully satisfied. Yeah. Cows are very dear to Krishna, as well as our seven mothers. Cow give milk, and by consuming milk, human being gets a brain tissue to understand spiritual topics. There is that conversation, this video, Srila Prabhupada is in Paris and he speaks with the Archbishop of, uh, of the Catholic Church in, in France and he's saying, why, why are you killing the cow, it's your mother? And, and he the cardinal would not understand it. He, he would say, yes, if children are hungry and you have a cow, you slaughter the cow and you feed it to the children, he said. <laughs> and Shilapad made the point, but the cow is your mother. It gives you milk. That, uh, that it, but these, these people are so degraded. In the name of religiosity, they present so many things. But what is their behavior? Fine. What is their, what are their qualities, their behavior? That to get knowledge, you must have behavior. That, and that's explained before in the third chapter of this canto. Yeah, to be a hearer, yeah, you must follow the four relative principles. You must have a good behavior to, be, to, to receive transcendental knowledge and be inquisitive. Inquisitive. Every question you ask should, be, should have a seat in it 
how help how does this question help me to make spiritual advancement that uh, so th there are so many topics in the Bhagavatam which you can go in but your motive should be how can this make me make spiritual advancement that kind of questions are required how does it bring me closer to Krishna asking that question? Yeah. That, uh, so this is, people have no, have lost all good qualities anymore. And therefore they can't receive real transcendental knowledge. That uh, they cannot understand it. That, uh, yeah, finer tissues to understand spiritual topics. But this is an emblem of moral principle. Cow represents earth, and if these are happy, then the people of the world are also happy. And it's true. Yes, if we take nice care of the bull and the cow, the bull and the cow can be protected for the goodwill of human society simply by spreading of Brahminical culture as the topmost perfection of all cultural affairs, the advancement of culture, the morale of society is probably maintained, and so peace and prosperity are also attained without extraneous effort. Yeah, we are repeating things a bit here, that uh, but we see in our movement the, who is prepared to take care of the cows, there are only few, few. So it's really an area we have to work on. It's very important. In some countries, uh, some the rules, there are rules which are really demoniac related to cows. That uh, yeah. it's, if, if a cow is, is uh, over a certain age, it must be killed. There are laws like that. It's very demonic and very difficult to uh, maintain all these and they, they, and by law you are required to give injections to the cows and so on. It's not easy. In this Kali Yuga makes everything very, very difficult. So uh, are there any further questions? Please raise your hand. But, uh, yes, Pura Prakna Kesh Prabhu, please speak. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tanajma. In this uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 16, 21 verse, this uh, education and bad character go ill together. Yeah. But such things don't parallel this said. So, can you explain this? Yeah, sure. That, that's an important point. That uh, we cannot make devotional service if we not behave properly. That that we, we must practice what we preach. The prachar and the achar must be there. That's, that uh, otherwise you cannot preach with authority. That uh, if you don't have the qualities of following the four relative principles, your mind will be disturbed. You cannot receive transcendent knowledge. You cannot understand it. There is no question of it. At the end of the, this is mentioned, at the end of the third chapter of this canto, the Sutta Goswami says, I will tell you the same thing as I have heard from my spiritual master. As I have heard with rapt attention, and I will explain it to you according to my realization. In the purpose Shila Prabhupada said, rapt attention. What does it mean, hearing with rapt attention? To hear with rapt attention, one must be able to focus one's, one's mind must, must be pure, Shila Prabhupada says. And a pure mind means being pure in habit. That means you, 
To be pure in habit means follow the full regulative principles. That's the minimum. Otherwise, you, you hear the scriptures and your mind is attached to something else. And it cannot go deep. You cannot concentrate the mind. That, uh, and by that, you have no realization of the scriptures. It, it remains just all theoretical. We must know that transcendental knowledge is not understood by the brain. It depends on our attitude. Three attitudes, serving the spiritual master with humility and asking the appropriate questions. We are directed to making spiritual advancement. Sincere questions. That's the behavior required. And also follow the four relative principles. Otherwise that pollutes the mind. You cannot understand a mother's. And then how is it realized? You please the spiritual master by, your, by that behavior, by following his instructions, serving him nicely, and so on. And by and his instructions are to follow the four regulative principles of religion, that uh, these four legs of the bull, you have to follow them, that... Uh, and, and then your, your mind can be peaceful. Otherwise, there's lust in your mind. It goes, it goes all, and you cannot, if you are not peaceful, you cannot concentrate and understand spiritual matters. But if we please the spiritual master and you follow these regulative principles, then they some sata yuktnam, but some people will come, the dami buddhyogam yenamam apayantite. Krishna gives you buddhi yoga through the heart. He gives you a realization of all this, of what you are reading to the heart. You need the realization. The vijnan is the real thing, not the jnan. The jnan is on the surface. The vijnan is deeper, is realization. And you need to realize it. When you die, you take the vijnan with you, not the jnan that remains here. Theoretical knowledge will not help, Srila Prabhupada says. Desham, Krishna says, Desham, Emvana Gampartam, Amma Jana, Jamtam, Nasa Jana, Atma, Bhavashtu Jana, Dipena Bhashvata. Krishna says, then if, he, if I'm pleased with the behavior of the devotee and he serves me with love and on behalf of his spiritual master, then I help him within, within to develop this knowledge and then you get the understanding so behavior is very important at universities today uh, when i did my when i i did my phd i went to the whole thing i graduated but i was i was with professors who and they know bhagavad gita they can quote Bhagavad Gita, but they drink wine, they are, they are doing so many things, nonsense things, but they, they cannot understand even that they are not his body. No way, even that they cannot understand. So that is not a process. The process was described in the second chapter of this first canto. Sister Sosha Dadanasya Vasteva Katayuchi, Shyamnatse Vyapra, Punya Tirtani Shivanat. Sister Sosha, it starts with hearing. Shadadanasya, with care and attention. And that's the same thing. Hearing with care and attention, you have to be pure in mind. And, 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 and that even is not sufficient. You need Mahat Sevaya. You need to please the spiritual master, the Mahatma, by engaging in his service. And then Krishna says, if you do that, you please the Mahatma. And Susu shows Shadadanasya, you hear with care and attention. Then I enter the heart from one who become attracted to hearing about me and I purify his heart. So, so 
that is required. So behavior is very crucial in, in understanding uh, the spiritual matters. That, uh, does that help? Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, okay. Uh, Monish, you want to uh, ask something? In verse 12, explanation in purport, Prabhupada has uh, explained that uh, the Himalayas were 80,000 miles. And uh, so I just wanted to understand the circumference of Earth today is considered to be 25,000 miles. So, so what is the idea and is there any change in the dimensions or how is it? I don't know that. These are geographical details that uh, whatever it is, that understanding will not help me with making spiritual advancement. But so uh, I don't know these things that you have to ask some devotees who are really interested in this thing. But sorry for that. Uh, Mother Apara Gorangi, you want to ask it something? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. Maharaj, my question was like how we said that those who are not able to follow the regulative principles, it's very difficult for them to understand the uh, spiritual knowledge. Yeah. So how do we understand that in the beginning, many of the followers of Srila Prabhupada, before they actually became his disciples, they were into all kind of sinful activities. So how they were able to understand what Prabhupada told them? Well, I tell you the following, that because they were surrendered to Srila Prabhupada's mission, it is surrendered to it's in the mission of Prabhupada that you get realizations. I, I spoke about Mother Narayani. She said, we went out in the beginning, the, the 16, 17, 18 hours a day on Harinam. And they were, they were free from, from the influence of Kali, they said, because they were surrendered. But later, when Shalapira Baba left, he surrendered, when he surrendered, was, went back and, and everything became less surrendered, I would say. So, so, so that, that is important, it's an important point you make, that if we, if we want to understand these things, we have to, to surrender, follow the instructions of the spiritual master very, very, very nicely. That, uh, so, it's, it is set in act of devotion. Iya yasyari dasye karmanamana sakari nikolas apyavastasu shivan mukta sautchati. That, uh, so, one who acts with body, mind, and words, and, and acts just for the pleasure of Krishna, nothing else. He acts as a spirit soul on the liberated platform. One is implicitly liberated, Srila Prabhupada said. One may still be impure in heart, but still one, soon one will become pure. So he says implicitly. So, and, but that acting as a liberated soul means 100% for Krishna. 100% for the, for the mission of Prabhupada. Nothing for ourselves. That, and, and that's the point made. And in the beginning, they gave all their oppos oppositions to the movement and, and you were joining the temple or you were, you were not a devotee. That was it not that time like that. And that's why, and that's why also in that time in the, in the 70s, that's called the Hare Krishna explosion. Because our movements, millions of books went out and, and, and we spread all over the world in that period. And that was Krishna's reciprocation with their surrender. But today, becoming a devotee, we see many times, is not that surrender. 
and therefore the timer is not and therefore we, we we stay on the neophyte platform we are not come making quickly advancement that uh, and that's a problem that's certainly a problem that we need to engage in Silopapa's mission to come to that point of surrender. That, is that okay? That, yeah, you have to unmute. Thank you so much, my friends. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then we, uh, we will be con continuing tomorrow. That uh, we will continue tomorrow with the next chapter and we will see how marriage breaks it deals with Kali. Thank you very much. Shilapopat ki. Jai. Yeah.